Mora conducts physician-led support groups, helping people live healthier, happier lives, free from chronic diseases like diabetes, hypertension, and obesity. And on our podcast, Health and Mora with Dr. Lori Marbus, we bring to you nutrition and lifestyle medicine experts and extraordinary guests to empower and inspire you with their knowledge and stories of plant-based lifestyle so that you can be your healthiest self. Welcome to the podcast. I'm Dr. Lori Marbus, and I'd love to welcome Christina Dor Drake. How are you? Good. I'm happy to be here. Thank you so much for having me. Well, this is fun because you're a co-founder of Willa's Oat Milk, but I feel like this conversation is going to go way beyond oat milk. Um, <laughs> just from our, our brief introductory conversation before we started recording. And but I want to get started though. First, let's let's really talk about what's behind you and your inspiration because I know your grandmother's a piece of that. And like I shared, my grandmother was a huge such a very important part of my life. And I can't wait to hear your story. Mine was as well. My grandmother, Willa, was a real force in my life. And and she was one of those people who I think was a force in a lot of people's lives. She would just really key into who you are and what made you amazing or special. And she would just like find that right away and really um, point it out and highlight it in in a way that just made people feel really seen. Um, so yeah, she was, she was a force. We often say she was real honest and uncompromising and that's really the ethos of our brand. (laughs) She, she did not have a strong filter, which was, um, you know, as a teenager was interesting, but, uh, when I was a teenager, obviously, but, um, she was also really warm and amazing. And, um, she had a real interest in food and health, which is part of the reason that Willis exists today. Awesome. So you know, let's go back to your grandmother being a force, which I love. I almost got, I seriously got goosebumps when you're saying, and she made people be seen, which I think is so lovely. And I think it's so honorable that you named it after her. So I think that's cool. Um, But why oat milk? I'm sure she had lots of other recipes. Like what was that inspiration and why start a company? Because this ain't no easy (laughs) way to get going in anything is to a physical product, much less a food product. (laughs) Yeah, no, it's not easy. But um, as we were just saying, it's so rewarding. Um, Yeah, so a a few years ago, you know, my husband and my sister and I, we were all plant based milk drinkers for quite a while. And we were looking at the ingredients on these, you know, so called plant based milks in our fridge. And we were just like, these are not really plants, it's mostly artificial ingredients. And wow, there's a ton of sugar in here as well. And my grandmother, Willa, used to make oat milk. Um, She actually started out making it for her kids and grandkids because she instinctively knew that oats are really easy on your stomach. And then she, of course, just kind of started playing around with the recipe and making it taste better and better. Um, She didn't know what prebiotic fiber was, but she instinctively knew that that oats were really good. And she made oat milk using real ingredients like vanilla with vanilla extract and sea salt and, um, you know, the normal things that you can pronounce that you would have around your kitchen. And so we started by just wanting to bring her recipe to the world. And as we got further down this kind of entrepreneurial journey, we just kept learning more and more things about the way most plant-based milks are made. And we realized there just had to be a more honest, and more real and more sustainable way to go about it. So in a way, we sort of redesigned the way that that oat milk can be made. So the transparency piece is really cool. So what makes your brand different from these other on their shelf brands? Um, For one, you know, we use organic ingredients. Um, You know, Willa's unsweetened original is based right off of my grandma's recipe. It's just oats, fill, and sea salt. And the dark chocolate that's coming out uses real ingredients like cacao rather than artificial flavorings. Um, The other big piece is we use the whole oat. We were shocked to discover that, you know, a lot of oat milks have a ton of sugar, usually oat sugar, and not a lot of protein or fiber. And mm. it's, it's well documented, they don't use the whole oat, they use the starchy part and, and, you know, process it quite a bit. So when we found that out, we figured out a way to use the whole oat to mill the whole thing. And that gives our flavor this really rich, creamy taste. It means we've got all the protein and prebiotic fiber intact. We've got just one gram of sugar per cup from the oats versus seven or 15. And um, it's also better for the planet because we are zero food waste. And a lot of people don't realize food waste is a a leading cause of greenhouse gas emissions. It, It releases methane into the atmosphere. So 
We like to say, you know, you'd be hard pressed to find a more delicious, more nutritious or more sustainable option. I love that, especially the sustainability piece is beyond the fact that the you have the organic ingredients, they're whole ingredients. You're looking at using the entire ingredient, not just part of it, the process piece of that. Um, that's that's really cool. The packaging, I'm sure we'll get questions as well. Is that compostable and friendly oh, as well? I wish it were. I wish it were. If anyone is out there looking to start a packaging company, I would love to talk to you because there is so much innovation needed in the world of packaging. Interesting. Um, the company that makes our packaging is working on a compostable cap and we continue to encourage them to do that. The good news is we use uh so basically we use Tetra Pak and that means that we're not using any BPA plastics, which, you know, almost never get properly recycled, even if you put them in the recycling. And then equally Tetra Pak is working really hard to make sure that it's recycled in over 80% of households in the U.S. Wow. Um, so they, they are working to continually improve and, and do better. Um, but I, I really wish it were all compostable. We, you know, we, we want to be the most sustainable plant-based milk on the planet. And as we grow, we'll just keep pushing um, and trying to improve on that front. Yeah, no, I, I can't even imagine the difficulties. Like I'd mentioned to you before my boys and they, they were just there. One of their products has a little wooden tea thingy, a little uh, stick. And they were saying how expensive the composable pieces of that is. And it's just, it's really hard to be what they want to be as well. So that's that is fascinating. So do, is this in the refrigerated section? Is it on the shelves? Where do we find it in stores? Normally we're sold in the refrigerated aisle. Sometimes um, Willow's is sold in the refrigerated section and in the shelf stable aisle. Okay. People always ask us like, how do you, how is it shelf stable? How does it not need to be in the refrigerator? And it's the packaging technology. It creates a vacuum seal and sucks all the air out. So we don't have to add any preservatives or anything like that. I mean, like I said, this one is just water, oats, vanilla, and sea salt. Um, and, and so, yeah, it, it's, it allows us to create a really clean product that is shelf stable and we, sh we save on shipping and things, which allows us to be at a more, you know, a attainable price point, a more accessible price point as well. Awesome. And then what are some of the other ingredients people should be watching for? Because if let's say, you know, the, comparing your brand to others, they're like, well, why see this thing on this one? Why it's bad about it? So what are some of those concerning ingredients you saw in the other plant-based milks that you're like, hmm, not so good? One is rapeseed oil. Um, you know, there's a lot of, out there about how it's, it can be inflammatory. Um, I know a lot of people who don't feel very well when they, you know, consume it. I, doesn't work for me. Um, I never feel good if I eat something that has it. Um, so that is one ingredient that we wanted to avoid at all costs. There have also been some headlines about a lot of uh, plant milks having really high glycemic index, um, which means you get that you know big sugar spike and crash. Um, and for that reason, we try to process the oat as minimally as possible, rather than trying to process it to make it super, super sweet which is why you find some of these oat milks have so much sugar from the oat. It's been processed um, significantly, sort of, it's not that different from the process of taking corn and processing it into high fructose corn syrup. Um, and so that, that glycemic index, that sugar spike and crash, it's not something that I wanna start my day with. I don't think most people do. And so that's part of the reason that we really process it minimally and, and go for just one gram of sugar from the oats per cup. No, that's fantastic. I, I can appreciate that. So when you say you're using the whole, is it like the groat oat that you start with and then yes. go from there? It's the oh, whole wow. oat groat. Usually when I say that, I get a lot of puzzled looks, but I love that. I love that you asked me that question. <laughs> yeah, no, you know, just from the other side of, you know, using groats, eating groats there, it's a, it's a lot to cook. So I've gone to the steel cut oats, but the eating the whole groat oat, that's, that's probably even more than I'm willing to invest time in just making a, a bowl of oats. But um, no, that's really, that's fantastic because it, it does happen even when you're looking at rolled oats, steel cut oats and the growed oats. When I have patients that are diabetic and they're on continuous glucose monitors, those CGMs, you will see even people who aren't diabetic, blood sugars rise 20, 30 points higher just with the rolled oat versus a steel cut oat. And oh, it's- wow. 
it's 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 pretty impressive and these are very insulin sensitive people like i said these aren't your diabetics or pre-diabetics these are healthy people so um yeah cgms are a fascinating thing um well excellent and then as far as tell me a little bit about you know the entrepreneurial track like you got the idea you started it what are some of the challenges but also the you know the really fun things that you're seeing and how would you encourage others to innovate and follow your track as an entrepreneur Oh my gosh, we our our story is really one of resilience. Um, so we we had spent a year and a half gearing up to launch in offices, co-working spaces, and coffee shops in New York of March in March of 2020. That that was a plan we had spent a year and a half getting ready for. We had tons of co-working spaces on board. We had tech offices on board, and you know, going from just you know, I had a I had a normal advertising job, um, going from a stable career and then starting a business is hard enough. But then when suddenly your whole plan and everything you'd been working on is just turned upside down, you know, that, that really threw us for a loop. Now, looking back on it, I see it as this amazing opportunity that allowed us to really diversify our business. So we got onto Amazon, we built um, the website and made sure that, you know, we had subscription as an option. We got into retail. We realized that we could perform really well at the retail shelf. We often beat our competitors, even though we're far more expensive um, in terms of sales. And so as a business, we, be we came out much stronger as a result. Um, but at the time it was, it was devastating, you know, and in 2020 in general was a, was a really intense year. <laughs> um, I, I was, I was also blindsided in January of 2020 with a breast cancer diagnosis at 36 years old with no family history. I, I was, I was a health nut. I was imperfect, of course, but, um, you know, I was, I was drinking matcha. I was, eating kale. I was avoiding, you know, BPA, however I could. Um, and thankfully my mom had always encouraged me to do self exams and I didn't really know how to do a self exam. Like I didn't really know what I was doing, but one day I felt something that I hadn't felt before. And mm -hmm. thankfully I brought it up to my doctor, got a mammogram and we caught it early. And, um, I ended up going through chemo, immunotherapy, radiation, and minor surgery while working full-time on Willas and getting ready wow. to launch in the midst of a pandemic in New York, when our whole business plan had been sort of turned on its ear. It, it was, it was not easy. <laughs> wow. I mean, you, you go enter your, <laughs> I can't even imagine you literally enter 2020 as one person and you you're such a different person when you leave 2020. I mean, the, the one starting a business in New York of all places where it all started and really, and then working full time and then the breast height, like a literally a life threatening, life changing diagnosis. Holy moly. At the age you were. <laughs> it was and smiling at the end of this is amazing. I mean, it's taken, it's taken it's taken a while for me to get to this point. You know, I often say at the time I had no idea I could feel so much gratitude because we caught it early. I had the most curable kind. I had a really positive response to treatment, but I also had so much anger and sadness, you know, and, and disappointment. And um, what I will say is it was also a year where I think I grew more than I ever have. And I, I now just share my story in the hopes that it might help someone else. You know, I don't want to share it to, to instigate fear. Um, I don't, you know, sometimes I tell my story to my friends and it's like, I get this look of like, oh my God, I need to go get a mammogram. And it's like, no, don't go get a mammogram because you're afraid. Do the self exams, get a mammogram just to learn more information about your body. Um, and, and, you know, just, just as you would go to the dentist to, you know, get a sense of, you know, how your teeth are looking. Um, yeah. yeah, it was a lot. But I, I think at, at the same time, even though we're a young company and um, I, I started it with my husband and my sister, and, and we now have an amazing team around us as well. Even though we're a young company, we've been through so much together <laughs> that we have so much confidence. And I no longer measure a good day by, you know, how were our sales? Did we get some big win? Did we get a new account? I now measure a good day by what problems did we have to overcome and how did we overcome them? Because 
as, as I'm, I'm sure you know, as an entrepreneur, that becomes the reality. It's like every day there's going to be problems to solve. And it's really about how you respond to them, you know? Wow. Well, there's a lot there I can unpack. Which, <laughs> which way shall I go? Um, just a, a brief on the, from the physician side of breast cancer, absolutely self-exam. And like I'd mentioned, you know, they're encouraging us not to teach women how to do self-breast exams for fear that it will lead to unneeded, you know, procedures or imaging. I disagree with that because I think physicians are in a wonderful place to teach patients. This is what a normal breast feels like, you know, get them before it's something scary or something that, you know, you'll help one catch something early, but two, all you're doing is giving a woman knowledge about her body. Like you said, this is about understanding your body. You live there on a good year. I will get your, you know, hands on a, a female's breast to do that exam once a year, if they come in. Right. And so I think it's so courageous of you to share your story because a lot of people wouldn't feel comfortable sharing their story. So I think that's brilliant that you're willing to do that. But two, yes. Oh boy. Uh, entering because, you know, I mentioned I'm co was co-founder of Plant-Based Telehealth, we, who I've since sold. We launched in March of 2020 as well. We took us a year to plan it. But for us, it was a silver lining as well, because now it's like telemedicine. Everybody was looking for it, right? And we right. were preaching a healthy message. And so for us, it was quite the boost. Um, not that I want another pandemic or anything, but, you know, it really helped us move along. But I really want to know what was the greatest lessons? I hear you speak about gratitude. What was the one lesson that you feel that you learned in the year 2020 greater than all? Because I, I love that your relationships were tightened and that you have support and that's beautiful. And I love how it's changed your reaction to problems. Like you said, are they're going to occur. There's going to be fires every day and how you put them out and your, how you come out on the other side is really key of resiliency and building. But what is the one lesson that you'd say that you've learned what's the greatest that you'd like to share other, with others? I, I think that as an entrepreneur, I, I was like many people believing this really harmful notion that you have to kind of run the, burn the candle at both ends to be successful and run yourself into the ground. And, you know, I, I work a lot as an entrepreneur, you know, you're working kind of all the time. You're joking about this earlier, but I realized when I was going through cancer treatment, I was like, okay, I need to participate in my treatment and my care. And that meant working out almost every day, eating really healthy, mostly plant-based, mostly whole ingredients, um, just really focusing on what felt good in my body and then taking time to do things like meditate and journal because, you know, there was a whole emotional roller coaster through all of that. And I, I needed to work through all those emotions. And I also, you know, I, I go with, I see a therapist. Um, I think mental health is really important. And I went from sort of thinking, oh, I'm giving myself permission to really go the extra mile and taking care of myself because I'm going through cancer treatment and then realizing why am I only giving myself permission to, you know, do a, a workout during around lunchtime every day, even if it's a busy day, just because I'm going through cancer, why am I only giving myself permission to sell, tell somebody I can't meet with you first thing in the morning because I actually, I want to take some time to meditate then or journal. I, you know, why was I just giving myself permission because I was going through something really challenging. And so what I've realized is that, you know, in, in order to be successful, we have to be there for our team. We have to be there for ourselves. We have to be there for everyone in our orbit. And that requires really, truly figuring out what we need day to day to be at our best and carving out time for that and prioritizing that. You know, even if I'm working seven days a week, I still make sure I get those workouts and I have time with my friends. I have time to step away. If I feel like I'm getting diminishing returns, you know, I don't keep working. I, I realize I need to take a step away and do something else. Um, so for me, that was, that was a huge, a huge turning point. I love that. And, and it's unfortunate too, that we live in a society that we actually have to have these conversations with ourselves. Like, oh, I give you permission to take care of yourself where it should, yeah. if, if we lived in a place where that was held at the highest regard, we probably wouldn't have the illness and the chronic disease because we'd be making different decisions. We'd be starting different companies like yours and mine. 
we would be looking at, you know, what is our end goal for not ourselves, but also our community. Cause we know if we take good care of ourselves, we're more, we're going to imply that with our kids. We're going to do that with our spouses. Um, yeah. Cause I, the, the most interesting conversations I had that I'm not sure why this is coming to me, but I'm sure it will be reveal itself in somewhere in this conversation is that parents are running ragged and then they, you know, they're not spending time with their kids or in front of screens. They're feeding them this horrible junk food. I had someone tell me, you know, I go to see my granddaughter and all their parents are feeding them is, you know, pancakes and sausages and literally peanut butter and jelly every single day for every meal. I was like, oh, <laughs> eight years yeah. old in front of screens. And it's just a really sad thing. But what is that child going to learn? The child's going to learn that that is, this is not, this is how you take care of yourself. This is what you do. Parents run ragged. You run a lot. You don't feed yourself well. And you numb your brain out with a screen time. I mean, it's just, it's devastating to think that, but that's what we raised. But I'd be curious to see with your experience and your, your journey, how has that affected others in your life? Because did you have that influence on others and that they're stepping back and saying, hey, I need to take care of myself too. Yeah, definitely. I mean, my husband is, um, my husband started seeing a therapist, you know, he always believed in mental health, but it was sort of the, the kick in the butt to like, really, really take care of his mental health in a, in a, a really clear way every single week. Um, I think that maybe also because I, my, my team knows I like to work out around my lunch hour. My team can see on my calendar when I have my time with my therapist. Um, you know, I talk about cleaning up my beauty routine and I talk about, um, you know, the, the way I ate during cancer treatment. I, I can't, I can't prove that it had a role in my treatment, but I was really fortunate that by the time they went in for surgery, there was almost nothing left. And what I, what I do know is eating really well, eating plant-based, working out a lot, doing those things allowed me to have the energy through the, the hardest parts of chemo to be able to continue working full time and, and feel good enough to do that. And so, um, I think for me, it's, you know, I've tried to create a culture with Willa's with our small team where everyone knows that prioritizing their health is the, the, the way that the kind of culture that we want to cultivate. And, um, we actively encourage it. And we also, you know, we believe in free health insurance, um, really good health insurance that has good mental health coverage. Um, just really trying to be the examples of what, you know, create the kind of company we'd want to work for at the end of the day. And those are the companies that you'll talk to their employees in 20 years, like, oh, I've been here for 20 years. You know, it's, you're not going to have the turnover. You're going to have healthier employees. They're going to be there for you. They're going to have higher accountability um, because they are going to feel they're part of the family versus just, you know, checking off. I worked my eight hours and walk away. Um, they, I mean, that's phenomenal because part of our work is working with corporations and employee health is a big ticket item for so many companies because there's so much chronic disease. But if you start with the culture of health, I mean, you're just going to naturally feed people to be well. I mean, I think that's, it's a really important thing to start from top down because that messaging and culture starts with you as a founder, right? And I think with parents too, I think it's no yeah. surprise. We have a lot of, um, a lot of people who are parents, a lot of moms on our team yeah. and we're sort of like, whatever hours you want to work, I don't care what hours you work, as long as, you know, we are able to connect when we need to and everyone's, you know, getting the work done, which we have an amazing team. It's, it's funny even saying that because they're all like always going above and beyond. But I think just um, it, it's so odd in a way that that's revolutionary to, to allow people to work on the schedule that is best for them. <laughs> right. Well, exactly. And it's funny that you mentioned that too, because I was just reading an article on circadian rhythms and sleep. So as we get older, um, especially as we enter our 60s and 70s, those decades, your circadian rhythm pulls back. And they're saying that people should probably go to bed by eight and wake up like at three or four in the morning as we get older. I was like, oh, <laughs> so, you know, um, Zoom is I was just like, it was really interesting to see that. And as we get, it's apparently each decade, the circadian rhythm pulls back half an hour. So that or awakening time, you know, it gets the latest in teen years. And then it, every decade, it pulls back half hour. So if you slept until let's say eight, when you're 
15 by 25, it's 7.30, then 7, 6.30. Yeah. Wow. I, I was always an early riser, so I'm really in trouble in the next 10 years. Because if someone in their 50s, you're just looking at this going, oh, my goodness. <laughs> but it's really, it is fascinating, right? To work with people. There are people who have different habits, their family commitments, allowing them to take care of themselves and the people, like you said, in their orbit and their and their their well being. Because I know that when my my family's well being is taken care of, I feel better as well as a mother and an entrepreneur. And you know, ugh, yeah, there's so much. What's interesting though, when you mentioned the mental health piece, it's so really important. Um, there, my daughter, um, one of her classmates, she is in residency now. Um, one of the young residents where she was uh, committed suicide last week, and you know, I, it just, it just brings home so much, how much that piece is so important. And just really, especially in the medical community, physicians have the highest suicide rate of any profession. And um, I was also active duty. And so soldiers as well have a high um, suicide rate. So it just, it was just so sad to have those conversations. And, you know, I'm checking in with, you know, Emily and her partner and saying, are you guys okay? And, you know, <laughs> we're here for you, but um, yeah, it's, 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 it is, it's, it's, I'm glad that's being brought forth, but you know, in medicine, when you go to renew your license, I'm licensed in all 50 States. And so I know what the questions are with each state that they're asking. All of them ask, have you been <clears throat> seen by a mental health professional for whatever you have to check that. And I know that when you do do that, you're flagged and you will be asked to verify why are you seeing a mental health professional. Wow. So it really lends right it lends people like myself um, and or medical professionals to not seek help or if they do not make it known to maybe colleagues that they're needing help or seeking help and encourage it amongst their friends or family. And so it's it's just an it's just a vicious cycle. So I'm really happy that you're open and sharing that with you and encouraging that. Um, yeah, it's a really difficult piece to speak about, but sometimes it's really, it's the most important. Um, it's so very important. Yeah, that's such a shame because those are the, you know, physicians and veterans are groups that have given, you know, so much in service and probably have been through so much trauma as a result and to be, yeah, contributing to the, the stigma. It's just, it's like the opposite of what the world needs, right? Um, yeah, exactly. Right. Um, yeah, physicians, it's, it's, it's just so interesting. Um, we don't do a good job of taking care of ourselves or each other. <laughs> so uh, it's, it's a really sad state of affairs. I, I could go on for hours about how I think things should change, but you no, know, I, I do want to encourage anyone listening. If you're needing help, you know, don't be ashamed. There's no, there's nothing shameful about needing help to talk about your mental health. We are human and that's part of our life's journey and story it's okay and needed more of us should be seeking help for sure and then we would just be so much better for it in the long run healthy wise and yeah so that that's fantastic but we got some interesting conversation when we started with open up. <laughs> <laughs> um but that's fantastic well i you know one of the main questions is on a lighter note that i always get is what do you eat in a day because of your breast cancer survivorship that's going to be really interesting and then also where does oat milk fit into recipes? Like what are some yummy favorite recipes? Cause I feel those two questions are definitely bouncing around in someone's mind who's listening. So please share away. <laughs> I, I try not to eat the exact same thing every day. I'd be curious what your thoughts are on this, but um, I see an integrative doctor and she reminds me that, you know, a diverse microbiome is, is, you know, a healthier microbiome. So sometimes I'll get into a habit of like making the same chia pudding every morning. <laughs> It just kind of, you know, in the morning, it's like, you don't really want to think and you're just like, okay, a little cacao powder, a little, little date syrup, maybe whatever berries. And then all of a sudden a week later, you realize you have the same thing for seven days every morning. So I, I try to switch it up. Um, but I do have a matcha latte every morning with Willa's unsweetened, which is our, our cleanest recipe. Um, I, I love matcha and um, I also love that, you know, there's just so many benefits. And I, I also find it doesn't give you that same kind of like caffeine spike that can sometimes, um, you know, 
as entrepreneurs, we don't need anything giving us more anxiety. So <laughs> I like the kind of like slow burn of matcha. <laughs> um, and then what else? I mean, I, so cruciferous vegetables and broccoli sprouts in particular are just like, you know, they're just like the fighters against breast cancer. Um, I recently learned that you can really easily grow broccoli sprouts at home. Mm -hmm. So I just bought one of those kits because um, it's actually really affordable compared to buying, you know, like the $7 package every couple of days at the grocery store and then much easier. Um, but yeah, I, I have a lot of, I always have like arugula in the fridge because it's so easy to just like, it's your cruciferous vegetable. And then I, I put on some aged balsamic and some, you know, good olive oil and, it's like, you can put that with whatever else you have around for lunch. And it feels like a really lovely, delicious meal. And it is a good reminder to me that I am, again, I'm, I'm a participant in my health and I'm, I've been told that it's unlikely my cancer will come back, but those fears are still there. So doing those little things like drinking matcha and having the broccoli sprouts and my salad or having the arugula salad just, you know, is again, helpful to my, my mental health and anxiety. <laughs> oh, I yeah. am a big chocolate lover. Um, some of my friends, when I was diagnosed were like, are you going to cut out sugar? And I was like, so wait, I'm supposed to cut out one of the things that I love because I'm going through like the hardest time of my life. Um, no, that didn't make sense to me. So I, you know, I, I buy like Raka chocolate, which is, you know, uses real Raka. They use this um, real cacao and they, they don't process it as much. And then they'll use like lower glycemic index sugars, like maple sugar, or coconut sugar, um, or I'd have huge chocolate. Um, because I, I, I rebel when I tell myself I can't have something. So mm. that I try to find the, the, the version of it that still gives me that fix, but, um, oh. you know, it doesn't make me feel crappy afterward. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Lakanto has a, the Kanto brand, they have a, it's a monk fruit, um, which they have like, I love like hot chocolate. Oh yeah. Same. I have their, their powder hot chocolate and it's just a powder and it's, it's, sweetened with monk fruit so I'm like this is so good and they have dark chocolate if you want to use that for recipes but I had a patient when you said the chocolate it was so funny when oh my gosh that's been so many years ago they like Dr. Marvis I'm fine to go on this plant-based diet but I have to give up my chocolate she goes I only have one little piece a day is that okay I was like of course <laughs> like she's like you know she's thinking it's all or none but I'm like if that will help you eat the rest of your day my friend eat one or two little pieces it'll be okay and so she's like like this the wave of relief came over her face <laughs> so yeah absolutely <laughs> that's I love music that. to my ears hearing <laughs> you say that <laughs> it's not going to have some good health benefits especially if you're getting the the brands that are are less processed and the darker chocolate the better so yeah absolutely <laughs> and so what are some like dinners and did you eat? And then what are some other good recipes with the oat milk that maybe people don't think about that might be yummy to try? Yeah. You know, I, I was so inspired during the pandemic by the recipes that our fans came up with. Cause <laughs> at that point I, I really hadn't used oat milk and, and much cooking and baking before. Um, but they, they, we have a ton of recipes, mostly from our fans on our website, everything from, you know, cream of mushroom soup, where, you know, mm. if you go dairy free or vegan, you think I can't have cream of mushroom soup, that's not happening. But, um, you know, oat milk makes a perfect substitute, uh, creamy sauces. So oat milk, and um, a little bit of like, the coconut, the, the fat that's in like the coconut milk can, mm -hmm. can you put that, you can put that together to create a dairy-free mac, mac and cheese, maybe sprinkle a little bit of nutritional yeast on top of it. Um, there are also a lot of great recipes for baking with oat milk and it creates this really fluffy consistency. Mm -hmm. um, so that, that was a huge um, like learning for me is I, I couldn't believe the things that people were creating. And I was like, that doesn't have any dairy in it. It looks like that. Um, so yeah, it was, it, that was one of the, I guess, silver linings of the pandemic. People really started cooking more and started taking a, a more creative approach and also like a more plant-based approach into their cooking. And I got super inspired by it. Yeah, absolutely. I love that. And you know, that going back a little bit to your cream and mushroom, mushrooms are very good for breast cancer. 
Um, oh, so, oh, absolutely. You should be having mushrooms daily if you can, um, at least a small serving. Perfect. <laughs> I love that. Um, oh, I, yeah, absolutely. Um, like I mentioned, you know, I have family history of breast cancer. So I'm, that's uh, definitely something I'm have dove in, into over the past years. Um, no, I, I love that creaminess. I can't wait to try it. And as far as um, you had mentioned, we could use a 20% discount for our, our company. Um, you know, anyone who's listening, Mora, M-O-R-A. Um, and then we'll have a Jonathan link it in down below in the show notes and um, to the website, which is willaskitchen.com. I love, love that name too, Willa. My grandmother's name was Maxine. So we were talking earlier and how I have an owl thing now because she loved owls and I just learned to love them. And then I walk by and it's like, hi, Maxine, how are you doing? <laughs> you know, or it's just like, <laughs> but Willa and your, your grandmother liked a particular animal as well. Elephants. Elephants. She loved elephants. It's actually, it's sort of funny when we, when we went on our honeymoon, my husband and I, we went to South Africa and we went on safari and they were telling us how elephants are a matriarchal society that's led by the grandmother. And I was like, did she know that? <laughs> Oh, I love it. Oh, yeah. Did you know that? Or was she just, oh, yeah. I love that. Yeah, no, my grandmother actually lived with my husband and I for eight years. Um, oh, wow. Yeah, so so my kids have had uh, the experience of multiple generations. Then my in-laws lived with us for six. We've had oh, cousins so cool. and friends live with us. So it's been really quiet the last year. It's been really sad. It's been like, we need people to come visit us. <laughs> we need people. Um, but Willa, Willa's a great name for an elephant, actually. I feel like a, a children's storybook should come out and it's Willa's oat milk or something. Willa, I don't know an elephant. I like it. Yes, but <laughs> I love that. Um, but excellent. Well, this has been fabulous. Is there any final advice or thoughts or things you'd like to share with our audience before we finish? Oh, I think, um, you know, I think sometimes it's, it's progress, not perfection, right? Mm -hmm. You know? Just incorporating more plants is always a good thing. And don't be afraid to get creative with how you make them. Oh, that's a great, I love that. And you can never fail in the kitchen. It's just you as, it's just you yourself and your family, now your family. They might give you some grief. I've gone through that myself, <laughs> but uh, you know, it's don't be afraid to go and experiment. And if it flops, who cares? You're not trying to like right. run the greatest sh cooking show in the world or something. Go enjoy yourself. And it's, it's a fun process of learning, but Excellent. Well, thank you again for this lovely conversation. And I'm sure it'll encourage people and check them out, guys. Again, like I said, it's williskitchen.com. And um, it's I can't wait to try it. Uh, and are you oh, yeah, what stores should we look for on the shelves, by the way? Um, so we're mostly in kind of the smaller co-ops and, and grocery stores. But we're also Willis is also available on Amazon. But you know, if you're okay. in here in New York, Union Market, if you're in LA, Erewhon, um, if you're in Texas, Central Market, um, Foxtrot in Chicago, uh, but you can always find Willa's at willaskitchen.com, like you said, and you can get a 20% off with Lori's uh, promotion code Mora or uh, check us out on Amazon. Awesome. And who doesn't have Amazon after the pandemic? <laughs> you're living under a rock. <laughs> All right. Excellent. Well, thanks everyone for listening and please share this with anyone that you feel like might benefit from it. And I can't wait to try it. So thanks again for your time. Thanks for watching. And I hope you enjoyed that video. Before you go though, please hit the subscribe and alert buttons so you don't miss out on any of the amazing content we're working so hard to provide you. We upload a new episode of Health and Mora with Dr. Lori Marbus every Friday. Now, if you'd rather listen to the podcast, you can find us on all the major platforms such as iTunes, Google Play, SoundCloud, and even Spotify. If you're looking for amazing resources to help you start and sustain a plant-based diet, exercise, recipes, or anything wellness, we got you covered there too. Because at Mora, we actually provide physician-led support groups to help people live happier, healthier lives free of metabolic disease. Don't forget to check out our website at mora.com and thanks again for watching.